Hey, if you're new here, I'm Jacob. I've worked as a software engineer for the last four years at a boutique financial consultancy in London. I recently left there to build my own apps, and the first one being Interlude, which I've been documenting on this YouTube channel. It's essentially an app that lets you search, save, and manage UK companies quickly and easily. While building my apps, I'm also doing a bit of freelancing on the side to keep things going, um, but my main focus is trying to build apps. Now, if you're interested in the real technical side of what I'm up to today, make sure you wait till the end of the video. I'll go into all of the detail of what I've actually worked on today. Finally, if you're interested in learning more about my journey, make sure you subscribe to this YouTube channel, which I upload weekly to, along with subscribing to my newsletter, which you can find on my website, which is the top link in the description. I also have a list or a, a few products available there on there now for junior engineers. So have a look and see if any interest you. Um, it's a great way for you, for you to support the channel directly, as long as they obviously provide value to you. Anyway, it, I'll catch up with you later, showing you the product and some of the, like going through the technical detail. Enjoy, sorry, enjoy tired me. Good morning, it is early. Well, not too early, I think it's around 8 a.m. But this morning I'm gonna be starting my deep work session. Um, today I'm gonna to be focusing on interlude and then there's some freelancing work that I need to crack on with. Um, so yeah, that's that's the start of the day. I've literally just woken up. Now I know sometimes I've said I would jump into doing some learning and doing some like a coding course, but today um, I just feel like I wanna crack on with my own project, interlude. Uh, and yeah, and that's just sometimes what I do. I'm pretty flexible of what I get started working on in the morning. I try not to kind of set myself in like a hard routine. Um, Cause I think that flexibility kind of goes and pushes more towards um, more creative work and better work. And that's what I'm gonna be trying to do this morning. So yeah, that's, that's it. Just had a few really productive hours there working on Interlude. I'm um, looking forward to sharing with you later in the video what I've been up to. Um, but now I'm actually gonna get some food, I haven't eaten yet. It's around, uh, I think 11? Yeah, it's just around 11. So I've had a good few hours uh, cracking on with Interlude. Uh, but now I need to eat some food, so I'm getting a bit, bit hungry. <laughs> um, and then gonna be working on some freelance project stuff for a few hours and then jumping back into interlude and marketing. And I think I might have a meeting later on this afternoon as well, but I feel pretty happy that I've got what I wanted to get done today on interlude already, which is quite good. Um, there's been a few bugs, but um, again, I'll talk all of the technical side of what I've been up to at the end of the video. So if you're interested in learning more about kind of what I've actually been up to from like a code and technical perspective, make sure you stay till then. Otherwise I just need to eat some food. So I'm gonna do that and then yeah, freelance work. Okay, so that client work has come to a natural end now. I'm gonna show you a few things in this part of the video. To start off, I'm gonna show you a quick product demo of how Interlude works if you haven't already. I'm then gonna to touch on what I've been working on today and what's actually looks it's actually started to work, which is really cool. Um, and how that links in with kind of the overall kind of roadmap, I, I suppose, of where I want to take the product, especially after what I've, what feedback wise from what I've collected from users and just from the demos I've completed. And then finally, um, about the new feature, <laughs> time we're going off, and about the new feature, how it actually works from a technical perspective. So let's jump into it and let's just, sh I'll show you quickly how the product works. So if we search for a company, let's do Queens. Enter, you can see we get a nice list. We can hit overview 
Um, and this is the new feature I've been working on today, this staff section right here. Um, but I'll go into a bit more detail how that works in a, bit, in a bit. But you can see you've got the staff over time. Um, this isn't done yet. I want to be able to toggle between the, these items and you can kind of see the wage across essentially time basically um, for the company. In terms of filings, nothing's changed. If you're new, here, if you're not new here, but if you are new here, this basically just allows you to to jump around and see the documents really quickly and easily, which is nice. So I was going to show you how this search experience feels like on the traditional tool. Let me just jump to Companies House. Start now. I can search for the company, hit here, and this is what it looks like. So if I show you that, and then show you this. Right? Can you see that? See the difference? I think there's some value here, right? <laughs> well, so does the, the paying user thinks there is. That's that's good enough for me. Okay, so that is the overview section. Okay, we've gone over filings, people. Um, again, you can just see the companies they're related. The, the director and the companies are also uh, kind of have some holding in. And then finally, periods. I've actually made a really cool update to periods, which I'll show you now. So one really cool feature of Interlude is that you can save companies. So let's go to saved. So you don't have to keep searching them over and over again. Um, so let me show you the demo accounting periods. This is really cool. So it seems really cool. And I'm sure you probably think it's quite boring. You can go to periods and then what it does is it now handles the kind of different accounting periods. So in this scenario, we've got their accounting reference dates and when we can work back and calculate accounting periods. Um, from that date, but the issue is companies change their accounting period reference date. So we need to figure out how we needed to figure out, or I needed to figure out how that worked, or how to kind of see how that happens. And it's quite easy in the accounts. They essentially just they will submit a document which says they've changed their accounting reference date, um, and so we just kind of look for that, and then calc and then it just kind of populates um, the the correct periods. And this was such a headache where I used to work trying to figure out trying to figure out you know the extended period and just visualizing it in a nice way i think uh, is super valuable especially just for me like when i look at accounting periods for companies this now does it for me super easy okay so that's the periods let's just jump out of that so this is the save section it's pretty pretty cool you can just kind of jump around and uh create new groups um and move your groups around it's just all pretty cool stuff now i would say if you guys have any feedback at all on the product process just on my thinking, just any feedback at all, please let me know in the comments below. Um, you know, in addition to that, I'll be sharing even more information in my newsletter, and that'll be the top link in the description. So if you want to get involved in commenting on my newsletter as well, feedback is just so welcome. That's why I'm doing it. Again, I just love just jumping into overview and seeing the employee graph for companies. It's really interesting. There was actually a company which is now in liquidation. Um, and you can see here how their employee count drops before going into liquidation. It's quite an interesting point because obviously this is still very early, but I, I'm now starting to think about what data points and and patterns can we pick up to kind of give some insights for companies possibly not doing so well in the future and maybe doing doing better. Yeah, there's a few ideas which I can talk about later. So that is the save section and then finally you've got history which is really simple um you just kind of see a long list of all of the searches you've ever made um, and it makes it really easy you can just jump into focus and it takes you back exactly where you were um so if i go to focus for Kinsley, you can it just it just comes up which is really nice okay so that is the product at its current form what i've been working on today is this section here um, before i jump into how that actually works let me just show you the roadmap so this is what I'm working on now, the advanced employee count. You can kind of see what's kind of coming up next. So what I'm doing here for the financial position, getting emails, phone number, websites, website, website traffic as well, and having those kind of all displayed in, in the search kind of overview point, you know, overview section, company timeline. So just being able to kind of look at a timeline for a company and see when accounts have been filed, when the employee count changes, all those items just in one clear, nicely presented timeline and then group structure and related slash related companies to kind of see how that overall section works. Now there's still probably a bunch more that can be done here, um, but those are kind of the first kind of key features which have been requested by people that are on demos and by the paying user. So that's what we're going for. And you can see there's a kind of a, a bigger overarching product, which essentially with us collecting all of this data, we can then kind of build up our own database and then provide like a prospecting tool 
at some point in the future. I'm really excited about website traffic though. I think there's a way if you can get website traffic over the like the past of a company's website and compare that to their financials, you might be able to figure out because obviously the financials are only up to a certain point, not into like the current point. You have to wait until they submit their accounts. So if you can kind of figure out or if we can if I can figure out a way to see a relationship between website traffic and accounts and performance, we can maybe make some estimations based on the current website traffic. Just an idea, but I thought it was worth sharing. So yeah, advanced employee account, that's what I've been working on. So you might be thinking, how does it work? What's the tech behind it? So it's really simple. All of this information can be found in the company's documents. So if I go to their accounts, there will be essentially a employee account somewhere here. And that is in, in most accounting documents. You can see here, employees, the average monthly number of employees. I don't know if you can see that, um, but you can see that, so it was 18. If we jump to overview, it's correct in 18. And then that will be the same for every accounting document in the past. So we're essentially just going through those documents, downloading them currently onto the local machine, um, and then OC turning them into JPEGs. And then from there we are OCRing each of them, um, getting the just the raw text from it. And then we're just essentially checking for the employee keyword. And what's really interesting, I tried to do some pattern recognition stuff to see if I could find the number after employees, but it was just taking quite a bit too long. So instead I did something really cheeky and I just synced up um, an open AI, the open AI, open AI SDK and just kind of said, give me the employees from this string and it worked. So that's what I've been doing. It's probably really lazy, but it works. And I think there's also scope for doing that in the future for the kind of other points on the roadmap where we kind of display the financial position and maybe company timeline as well, maybe not so much, but I think the financial position for sure would be useful. And there's even scope to maybe even have it to summarize if you can kind of condense all of the company documents onto like just a bunch of objects on a database, you could essentially set up like a prompted AI model or large language model to kind of be able to answer questions about the company, summarize points about the company, potentially predict stuff about, I don't know, that's probably a bit, bit out of scope for what I'm doing right now, but you can kind of see the direction of where I'm going. So it's really important when we save, sorry, I've just been blabbering on there, but when we save documents and save everything, the database structure is really important because we want to be able to, once we OCR a document, we don't want to do it again. And that's where I've been looking at this tool. So Amazon Textrax, I think it's called. Um, at the moment, I'm just doing it all on my local like, machine, but I think it makes sense to upload the documents there and then use this. And yeah, that's, I think, how it's going to work. But I'll show you quickly, you know. So here's the function which does it. Um, we it expects a document URL and a company number, and then we essentially just download it directly to the <laughs> local um, file system for now. But obviously, that's not scalable. And the problem with that not working would be Heroku itself only has a limit of like 500 megabytes of RAM. So if you were downloading those files on it constantly, it would just it would just implode basically. Implode's the wrong word. It wouldn't like it and crash. It would crash. So we download all the files. We and this is the check image process, which is in a promise to all. Uh, so you can see here, OSR result. Does it include any of these kind of words? Let me just that. You can kind of see these are kind of the keywords which we're finding um, that on that page which holds the employees. And then all it essentially does, I'm just I'm going to show you how it, how it actually works. Um, and then we run this, get number of employees from text, and we just drop the text in, um, and then it will give the number of employees, which we then return back to where the function is being called. You can see here, I'll show you this function. It will probably make you laugh. You can see, uh, return the number of employees displayed in the string. Do not add up numbers or create new values, just the number within the string. Called number of employee, yeah. And obviously we've got JSON, uh, type on just so it's like really simple and that's how it works it's 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 so simple um i will i will keep on probably you know adding and updating this prompt but that's that's what's worked for me so far and it's, it's working pretty well so let me quickly show you how it looks in the logs when i run a company um through it let's do it so what i'll do i've just made it so it doesn't do the checks. So what we're doing with it is once you save it, we save it to the database. Every time it's called, we check the, the dates of the most updated documents. If there's no update, then we don't bother updating anything. Um, we just kind of serve the original um, items that have been saved. 
So if I go to get employee calendar now, let me show you. So we'll have the, you'll see the documents populating in here and then we'll see the live text coming through. So very simple, let's just click open. Okay, cool, so you can see all the documents on the right here being downloaded onto um, the local machine. Not scalable, don't do this at home folks and deploy it to a Heroku instance, would not be good. Um, so it essentially just returns, you can see here we've got the first, well now they're all coming through and it's returned, you can see the number of employees. Okay, so uh, in here, so you can see here the, the, the two, the average number of employees da, 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 was in that 2019 too. So if we go to this now, it's not finished yet. Ah, oh, there we go, and it's come through. I don't know if that's made much sense, but that's a bit more technical insight, which I have not been sharing. Um, so hopefully you found that useful or, or it not uh, just at least interesting. So you can kind of see the plan for Interlude where we're gonna be essentially using all of that data which we can now extract, uh, which we can all have always been able to extract from companies' house documents and layer on top, use that kind of as a data pool and layer like a large language model over the top of that data to be able to kind of just take out insights really easily. So that's that's pretty much it. That covers the, the product demo and I think everything which I mentioned. So I just want to say thank you so much for watching this video. I really, really appreciate it. If you're interested in, in Interlou, um, be sure to just check it out. If you go to my website, jacobsargent.co.uk, it'll be in the ventures section. You can click it and just check it out. Um, feedback, again, I'm just always welcome. The whole reason why I'm uploading videos to this channel is to obviously get you know awareness for Interlou, but also to get feedback from people. Um, lo loads of feedback that has been kind of mentioned in and has been put in the comments of the previous videos has actually had an impact on the product. So if you've got any thoughts, let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, I'm sure I'll see you on my next video. I'm uploading weekly, so be sure to check back next week for my next video. And um, if you wanna, uh, so if, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the like button. And if you wanna see more videos like this, make sure you subscribe. Um, and I'm sure I will see you on my next video. Thanks.